Recording. Uh, so, hi everyone. Welcome. This is the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group, uh, IPFS Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group uh, meeting, uh, which is now weekly. Uh, so, today is January 15th, Tuesday. Um, welcome. I'm going to share my screen. Hi, Oli. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm going to share my screen. If I, okay, cool, start recording. Uh, could everyone please put your names if you haven't already in the list of attendees in the document. Um, is there anyone volunteering to take notes on, uh, on the second half of the meeting, for the second half of the meeting? Yeah, Oli, thank you. Hi. Um, cool. Um, so, uh, my proposal here is also in regards to the, uh, to the new planning for, for the new year for these meetings, um, that we, um, cycle, uh, the leads on, on the meeting. So uh, we're going to ask for volunteers for the next meetings. I would, I would say like cycle every two weeks or a month or four weeks, uh, a, new, a new lead. Um, so that people um, can get, start getting used to, to leading these types of meetings if, you, if you're not. Um, all right, so um, please everyone add, add items to the agenda that you'd like to discuss on the second half. So for people that, that are new uh, to this, to this format, uh, we're going to start with the updates, which are going to be hopefully focused on just blockers. Uh, and uh, we count the number of uh, people that are going to give their updates and divide by the remaining time um, before we hit the half hour. And that's the time you have to give your updates. Um, and so let's, um, and the second half will be for uh, the rest of the agenda, discussions or demos that people want to give um, or questions that they have. Cool. So place your items in the agenda if you have them. Um, and while you're doing that, let's start with the rounds of intros and updates. Intros, I don't think there's anyone new to this group today. Uh, so I guess we'll just stick with the updates in the order of the attendee list, which I can start myself. Um, so last week, um, between the, the last meeting and, and today, not much was accomplished. Um, reviewed a few uh, pull requests on peer base, but that's I was mostly occupied with internal uh, PL stuff. And right now I'm at Porto, uh, which I guess the majority of this meeting is uh, is uh, geographically in Porto. Um, for the lip 2 p Happy Fest lip 2 p um, Hack Week, I guess, or Dev Week. Um, so uh, my, plan, my plan for next week is to focus on what I should have been focused on this week, which is um, speed up the tests with the pre-baked peer IDs, um, try Versidec or IPFS log to create a chat app and see how that goes into um, what would be the efforts to integrate that into, into peer base um, and kick off the peer base rename, uh, renaming and also to continue some work on connection management in peer base. And that's it for me. Next up is Andre Souza. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. So from the last week, week until today, I've drafted, I've, I've drafted some IDM concepts uh, regarding the UI look and feel. I focused mostly, mostly on the home page and the profile page. Uh, I've made the revision with Pedro Miguel for the, some discussify animations, in specific to to comment edit mode. Sorry, to the comment skill 
and the placeholder, which is the content bars on the message, messages of the app. Um, uh, I've, I prepared yesterday a prototype with a, with an example for the fab button uh, with a morph with a morph example between the the fab and the sidebar itself. Uh, the next steps uh, for this week and to, to, to the next week will be the the animations revision regarding the content comment edit mode, which Pedro uh, start, started today, um, and then the fab animations uh, with the, the examples, the use cases for the entry and exit, and I will continue the IDM concepts. Uh, they need to be revised with the Moxie team. I need to speak with Marco and uh, Sarazor and Recruit, and then apply the look and feel, uh, the one that will be chosen, and apply them to the, to the other pages. Uh, there's something that I don't uh, place on uh, the agenda, which is most, most basically focus on uh, other web the dynamic data, which is one of the PL uh, videos which were take, was taken care of by, by Tiago here. Uh, that, that was uh, saw, saw with uh, Zach previously, and yeah, it seems good to go. Yeah, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, next up is Pedro Miguel. All right, so uh, what I have been doing and what I will do next is related to uh, discussify animations and uh, what I did finish this this uh, week was the placeholder uh, has some kind of animations the skeleton of the, of the comments have uh, some some animation um, the, also when you are scrolling uh, on the on the extension uh, the comments that are entering in view also have some kind of scale uh, so I also finished this this animation. Uh, I, what I am doing right now is I am trying to finish a component, a, a complex component that is uh, taking care of synchronized scroll, focus, and and the animations uh, themselves. Um, I I also started um, the the comment edit mode that has some kind of opacity, but I, I need to finish the, the, the complex component that I told you about first. Um, also, I, I did ping the, the legal team to, to, to get the privacy policy uh, so that we can launch the Scassify on Firefox. Um, so what I will do next, uh, the fab has some kind of animations uh, entering and exiting, so I will do that. And um, also when you are editing or you are writing a, a reply, uh, and if you have text on the text area and then you click cancel, so it appears a, a, a model, and that model needs to have a, a fade out effect. So that's what I'll do next, and that's it. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, Jim. Um, so, uh, building on what I uh, started last week, I um, started to build, uh, play around with my little, um, I'm calling them sketches, these like so little simple um, test cases that you can drive interactively um, at the console. Um, last week I demoed during the talk uh, like one with two peers. Uh, I just tried to modify that demo, uh, fix up the state machine a little bit so I could drive it all the way to 26 peers. And surprisingly enough, it worked. It was pretty cool. Um, and then I, I didn't go beyond that because there's only 26 letters in the English alphabet and I'd have to change my codes. <laughs> uh, so, um, and then I, I did another version of it uh, where I did like a control sample versus a test sample. So I had two different versions of the peer based library and great, drove them in synchronization with the keyboard. And uh, there wasn't really much difference between the two versions I chose. So, but that might be useful, uh, you know, in the future when we do have some like performance uh, test cases and things, and we'll be able to see the performance like with our eyes. So I, I was excited to get that one working. Um, and I was really, really interested in Swarm JS. I see Victor's on the call. Um, <laughs> so um, I actually did one. Uh, I watched a bunch of Victor's videos, and then I tried to use Swarm JS. I just did really, really um, simple one. And uh, yeah, that one worked. So uh, 
it's cool to try try that one out. Um, it's sort of Swarm JS is neat. It's sort of neat with the GraphQL mixed in there. Right there. Um, and then uh, let's see. Yesterday, uh, because I was working on all this stuff, I didn't catch a, a regression that happened last week, where uh, PeerBase uh, was batching the deltas together and was actually we have these ideas sub collaborations, and that test case wasn't uh, working so. Um, the, the the content was getting mixed together. It was sort of funny output, so I, I uh, patched that up uh, last night. So it should be working now. Um, and, um, and then I sat in on two different working groups: the browsers working group and the community working group. And uh, I'm just sort of <laughs> lurking there, not really doing a whole lot. Um, and so uh, things I'm blocked on, um, the Jenkins server in touch with, with R, I'm not sure why, why he didn't respond to me. Um, and then uh, I think going forward, um, we need to talk a bit more about what we're officially going to do for Pinner for PeerPad in terms of like if you reboot, like this pinning to an ephemeral disk right now. so. Uh, we need to have a better solution for that so we can reboot the pinner node and say, not lose the data. Um, and I've got a bunch of ideas for more of these little sketches. Um, uh, so that's it for me. Cool, thank you, Jim. Uh, I've added um, a question or slash discussion at the agenda for uh, later for um, Pinner for sorry at, at, at the end Pinner for PeerPad. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's let's briefly discuss what would be the next steps for for that uh, later in this meeting if you have time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next up is Adin. Are you there? Yeah. 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 Hi. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, some minor video issues. Um, so yeah, I've I've been uh, I guess trying to work on a few things simultaneously. Um, mostly just uh, you know chiming a little bit on some of the other proposals that you guys have been working on, which are really great. And <clears throat> I'm trying to think a little bit more about the the peer based concepts. And I feel like every time I try, I end up sort of rewriting a little because I'm trying to figure out how to take into account more than just what we already have built. Um, for the things we're planning on, and uh, I'm also been been poking around more about and asking asked a little bit at the libp 2 p meeting yesterday um, for some advice on how to make a uh, synchronizing append only DAGs uh, work on public channels. Um, right now, I have it set up so if you know who all your collaborators are in advance, then you can just talk to them, but to have something that works a little more like how PubSub works or how PeerBase works um, is uh, is important. So trying to figure out that and also how maybe to separate this out. It uh, looks like some of the things that we're doing in PeerBase are things that libp2p should be or could be handling for us. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm I've been thinking about and working on. Uh, and I am I'm out next week. Uh, that's that's most of it. Cool, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, uh, on the concepts, if when you're ready, if you want just just put it on an IRC format and expect that to change in the future, you can you can make that work public if you're comfortable with it. It's yeah, I think what I'm gonna try and do um, tonight and uh, tonight tomorrow is just make sure that everything. I have right now is is up on on GitHub so that people can give me comments while I'm while I'm out and then I'll take a look at them when I come back. Nice. Um, thank you, Adin. Uh, next up is Andre Cruz. Yes. Uh, let me bring the notes up. Okay. So in terms of uh, the tasks that I've concluded, so the, um, the IPLD support uh, to the IPFS log um, 
module was finally merged, which means that IPFS log now uses IPLV links in order to uh, link the heads and the next fields of the data structures. Um, this, this was um, initially uh, an easy task, but um, we, we uh, over the time, we actually um, see that it was kind of complex because one of the things that uh, changed was the data structure and the codec uh, used to store the data and they wanted to be backwards compa compatible. So what this means is that uh, we had to do some kind of tink tinkering in order to support old uh, data structures and also new ones because the older, the older ones was, were, were uh, stored on uh, DACPB and the new ones were uh, obviously stored uh, using Daxibor with, with IPLV links. And they wanted to um, have OrbitDB database work on uh, previous data structures and also new ones. So this was kind of complex, but um, it was merged. It's a proposal of stability in terms of the data structures. So I made uh, kind of an hack in order to, to do that, but I also made a proposal a more formal proposal on how to handle breaking changes on the data structures in the future and also to the public API. Um, you have the link there to my proposal, um, but essentially it's like um, a migration pipeline of, of some sort, uh, a, read, uh, a runtime uh, migration, which means that it happens on, on read um, operations and not a full migration of the, of the, um, of the data. Um, so there's a proposal there. Uh, we have some, some discussions on peer base as well related to these uh, topics because um, as far as I know, we have also data structures, internal, internal data structures of, of peer base, like the membership, CRDT, and so on. And if you want to support uh, uh, backward, uh, backwards, uh, have backwards compatibility on those data structures, we also need to address that somehow. And even developers like, like me that, that uh, uh, made Discussify and, and also developers that made a peer, uh, peer path, we also probably want to have some kind of backwards compatibility. So this is the thing that happens both internally on, on peer base and also uh, externally for developers that build, build upon uh, peer base. Um, so I've made a proposal uh, there and perhaps you could, you could read it and um, uh, perhaps have some sort of discussion uh, later on uh, on how can we um, address that on, on peer base as well. Um, also, I've been, I've been reviewing a few pull requests on, on IPFS log related to the things uh, about Versidag uh, versus uh, IPFS log that uh, many contributors or a few contributors have been making. Uh, I've also had the timeout support for uh, reading operations on IPFS log because um, they didn't have uh, the, the, the timeout, so I've added that. I'm not really satisfied on the solution uh, that is there because um, it's too complex perhaps to explain, but uh, it will probably change. Uh, I will probably change the pull request because um, there's a few uh, things that uh, made, me, made me do like I did, but uh, I want to change the, the, the way I've made it. Uh, also, I've been, I've been working on proposing going to uh, Reboot Web of Trust session number eight, which will happen next month um, on by the end of February and, and, and in the beginning of March which is a decentralized identity workshop. Basically, uh, like this is the, the eighth session uh, and um, basically all the DID spec and DID auth and, and many things related to identity actually was proposed or draft there. So this is a very important workshop and um, me and Pedro alongside with, with Juan, Juan um, will we'll go there. Um, in terms of what I'm doing now, I'm iterating on the identity breakdown doc, and I'm, uh, I want to make a, an apologize because I, I haven't had many time to actually respond to all the feedback that I have in the document, but hopefully next, uh, the next few days I, I will have that time because I've, built, I've been like uh, switching context between IPFS log and identity and other things. Um, so next on, uh, I think we should create issues for each section on the identity breakdown doc so that we can um, uh, like migrate what we have done in the document to GitHub issues and start working uh, there, from there. Uh, I will also 
schedule some brainstorm sessions on a few topics of the identity breakdown topic because I think some of those topics actually need to be um, discussed with the team and involve, um, involve some people in order to uh, converge on some, on some topics. And finally, because people, um, some people of, of Protocol Up Labs are here on Portal, I, I will hopefully hang out with them. Uh, Holly is here, David is here, and Pedro is as well, and some other people of the Lib P2P team. And that's it for me. Thank you, Andre. Um, just, just a quick note about the rebooting mode of trust. Uh, it will occur in Barcelona uh, by the end of as, uh, by the end of February, beginning of March. And I'm we're at the stage of planning that, so we may rent rent a big apartment for anyone else that is planning to come. So there will be a, if you're internal to Protocol Labs uh, or or you have uh, permission to to go. From someone just just ping me and and we we will uh, get uh, we'll probably we can could share uh, an apartment there uh, if you're interested in in coming um, if you're interested in, in identity and right. that sort of stuff uh, cool thank you uh, so next up is Victor yeah uh, hello uh, so uh, I think uh, it is not the first time I'm talking, but last time I was talking, it was like two months ago. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll give uh, an update. So I'm working on replicated object notation uh, uh, version 2.1, which is like causal CRDT, and at the same time it is a Merkle duck. So one second, technology. Uh -huh. So this thing, uh, replicated.cc, all the uh, relevant texts are Do you see the screen? Yep, yep, we do. Uh -huh. So all the relevant stuff is here. Uh, examples and so on. So basically it is a notation which has like one port, like logical timestamps attached to different pieces of data. So it is able to always merge it using CRDTs and it also has um, annotations. Uh, it, uh, basically, the Merkle tree is derived from the tree of operations and uh, uh, typically, uh, well, and some hashes are mentioned explicitly, so ideally those hashes must cover the entire data set. Uh, uh, I I implemented currently in C++ on several reasons. Well, uh, m my like key motivation here uh, it, it is actually a, a typical comment when presenting like distributed uh, web on conferences uh, like uh, like thousand people developers and then they say like well it is a good idea but how can we use it like tomorrow what can we do useful this uh, so basically i'm, I'm tr trying to make a little embedded database for mobile devices which may also work using web assembly in the browser uh, uh, so it, uh, basically embedded databases is a very hardcore topic so I'm using RocksDB which is specifically like a Lego database uh, which is like a database for building other databases so all the hardcore stuff is done by uh, other smart well-paid people and uh, I'm just doing the CRDD and uh, hash and part so currently it is in, in a very prototype basic conditions so uh, it it kind of uh, uh, responds to very basic queries like uh, what is the hash of, a, of an operation or it may for example map run frames into external representation like CSV for example Actually, CSV is the only mapper that works now, but I uh, also have a plan to make JSON and plain text mapper and what's not. Uh, so, 
uh, and on the inside it looks like this uh, so basically it's all made of wrong frames uh, data plus metadata this strange thing is typically metadata uh, and this less strange thing is typically data and these are the hashes so uh, uh, the storage is chain based whatever it means uh, uh, so this is more or less what i'm working on uh, and uh, currently i'm kind of making it demoable so so i have the basic engine working more or less so i'm adding like data formats and everything uh, today like uh, i did a very preliminary version of repl replicated global array which is like our, <laughs> uh, our main certainty type actually for collaborative editing and uh, everything like that uh, so this is more, more or less uh, it is on github so uh, Feel free to uh, check it out. Actually, it is not released yet, so uh, then please pin me first if you'd like to check it out. I will have to add, add you to um, uh, to the list. Uh, questions? Uh. Yeah, I got, I got one question, but I know if I don't know if it's too soon to ask. But um, is it possible to use run um, uh, on top of of Delta CRDTs? Like use use Delta uh, CRDTs? Uh, basically, um, uh, over the past uh, I don't know several years, there was certain converge convergence in the CRDT world. Uh, there is a nice, but. <laughs> uh, a uh, very big text named uh, data laced with history well one guy who currently works <laughs> for apple uh, he basically um, uh, explains in very fine detail that uh, that convergent evolution of crdts and uh, like this brand of crdts is convergent with delta crdts and uh, I, mean, I mean initially it was like off based crdts or state based crdts and then they started converging so this run it is kind of op based but at the same time delta enabled if you wish so it, it is like very clo close to uh, delta certities because uh, it has the same data structure for patches uh, object state and operations so it, it is not exclusively uh, operation lock or something so it is like one of those convergence schemes so uh, so more or less, it is a very similar thing to Delta enabled CRDTs. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. My my input on that is I think it'd be possible to just do like a really crude integration where you just treat the use the the Delta CRDT stuff that we have to just do like a replicatable grow array and just put the RON entries into that just to. Uh, just like, like it wouldn't be like what you want to actually do. I think it is possible to convert them. I mean, if you have yeah. all the data nodes with their timestamps, yeah. then it is possible, I think, to map it back and forth, unless you already drop the metadata, but even then it is possible. Yeah, just sort of encapsulating one and the other as opposed to... Like, uh, I yeah. think it's, I mean, formally, even obvious validity may be expressed as state based on the other way around, yeah. and this are much closer. But uh, the idea about wrong, it is actually a formal notation. So it has like formal grammar and everything. So it, it is not like uh, I have one implementation and you have another. There is actually a formal grammar which looks awful like all formal grammars. One second. Uh, uh, what is this? Sorry. Uh, one second. Uh, so... And uh, 
like this for example. So basically, this is the formal grammar for the text-based version of the protocol. There is also a binary version. And for example, considering form JS, it makes sense to convert it entirely to the binary version because these days it is not really difficult to parse binary in JavaScript and and um, once we will be updating hopefully swarm js to 2.1 i think we'll be using the binary version of the protocol on the other hand the text version is much easier to read and debug and everything so uh, but uh, well in javascript it is a bit painful to, to parse it in, in terms of performance and everything uh, in simple parse go and uh, others uh, parsing is not such an issue so this is more or less state of the things. Thank you, Victor. Um, I added, uh, there's a question from Adin before that, I'll ask you to, can, could you add the link to the, to that article that you were referring? Uh, oh, uh, one second, yes. Of history. Sure. I passed it on, on the comments, but if people uh, may want to refer to your notes um, there and get the link from there, or even the link to, to your current implementation, of um, of Ron in, in C++. Um, uh, yeah, if, if you could, if, yeah. Uh, do, do you have the, um, if you could add them to the notes, uh, sorry, the notes in the, the grip pad notes. That would be very useful for people later, later on. Yes, sure. um, Thank you. Uh, Adin, you had a question? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, so one was just the, uh, the GitHub thing that you posted, uh, I, we can't get access to, which I'm not sure if you knew. Um, the other is, I'm just trying to like understand a little more what the, um, the, the motivation behind, uh, behind some of uh, the things like the, like, uh, why, why try, why put the effort into making the formal grammar sort of operate? Like, what makes that easier for you than just saying, "I want to use proto buffs or whatever"? Um, uh, like, basically, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it is not about the formal grammar; it's about the formal model because it uh, it is effectively embedded in, into the database. So. Uh, it needs to be very, very strict to make sure it, <laughs> it works always, no matter what. So there is a very strict uh, formal model, what is uh, allowed, what is not allowed, how it works. So any implementation must work deterministically exactly this way. And uh, actually, that formal model, it, it is very, how to say it, uh, there is some internal format, which is very simplistic, like everything is... Uh, uh, 16 bytes, every field is 16 bytes, everything is fixed width, and po 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 po, it more or less corresponds to in-memory layout, and uh, when it calculates hashes, it is using that internal layout, but that internal layout is basically painful to serialize because it takes too much space. So there is text-based serialization, there is po po uh, binary serialization, uh, protobuf serialization, absolutely no problem, JSON-based serialization, no problem. Basically, there is some, like, nominal internal format, uh, which kind of the definition of things and any serialization that uh, can be derived from the internal format and parsed back into internal format is a good serialization. So uh, protobuf absolutely no problem. Uh, or uh, binary JSON, uh, any variety of binary JSON also absolutely no problem. Uh, and uh, well, and in case of the text by based serialization, well, Formal grammar, well, is necessary to make sure it always parses correctly, deterministically. And basically, I'm using a parser generator to make the parser, which is 5,000 lines, and uh, which is most likely correct. Uh, because uh, I'm using Dragile, which is like heavily used in high load applications by Cloudflare and others. So, uh, I need that for formally defined grammar to have a formally correct parser, which I am absolutely sure will work because it works in the core of the database and it must like always work without any exceptions or any strange cases or anything. So that is the situation. 
Okay, thanks. Um, and is there any uh, interest in using things like uh, like multi hashes as as the pointers? And like, what are you using as hashes now? Uh, I'm currently using SHA-2, but uh, well, it is not like a requirement. So it may use any hash function to uh, basically uh, what is fixed here is uh, the structure of the tree. Uh, because uh, it, it is defined by the structure of the causal tree. And uh, the hash function is uh, absolutely like any, uh, any, any function that works uh, will work uh, like topolog <laughs> topologically the same. Yeah, no, I just thought it might be cool to be able to, uh, if you wanted to swap out your communication channel with IPFS, then you could just start requesting the operations. And if you have the multi hash, ah, using, the using uh, any kind of hash, uh, yes, sure. Uh, I, I'm actually more reliant on UUIDs, and I mostly use hashes for integrity checking because uh, hashes have no internal structure, and it is difficult to how to say to route on hashes. Basically. To route on hashes, you need a, a w, uh, um, you need a table of all the hashes, right? Like distributed hash table, whatever. But you need all of them in memory. And if you consider like IP addresses or anything like that, they have uh, some sort of quasi structure, which allows to like aggregate them uh, in batches and greatly optimize uh, all those things. So I, I, I'm actually using. Uh, UUID for like uh, routing order in purposes and hash for integrity checking. And uh, I'm doing my best to like use hashes implicitly uh, without actually uh, storing them. Uh, most of the time I like der derive them on, on the fly. So uh, it is a big and interesting topic and uh, I, I didn't solve it uh, like <laughs> 100 person Percent, but uh, that is more or less uh, the approach. Cool. Uh, thank you. I, I think we have to move on to the next thing. Maybe, maybe if you want to have like an, a, a discussion point on on this later, if you have time, could add it to the agenda. Um, and yeah, Oli, you, um, you're you're up. Hello. Um, just briefly, uh, I've been working on the IPFS web UI. I have nothing particularly relevant to the dynamic data group to add, but uh, we've been fixing bugs with uploading directories and multiple directories from drag and drop in the web UI. Um, and this week, I hope to sync up with the libp2p crowd and Pedro with the dynamic data stuff, and hopefully Andre Souza and Pedro about the the UI concerns that your team has. Um, so maybe more next next check-in. Nice. Thank you. Um, and welcome. So next up, um, there's a bunch of questions. Uh, when will we discuss the new, new name of Peerbase? First one. Uh, yeah, right away. Uh, we, should, we should be discussing that. And not necessarily in public forum. Uh, so, uh, because of, of obvious, obvious reasons. Uh, but we will, we will that uh, really soon, trademark. Um, yeah, really soon. Um, prioritize the next question. I should, I should share my screen so that you guys also. Yeah. It was me that added that one, um, the second ah. one. Uh, do you want to uh, describe that? Yeah. It yeah, it's related to the pinner, um, which is the ability to pin any CID, uh, which is currently blocking us of having the pinner integrated on Discussify because the CRDT itself, um, even if that's the CRDT itself uh, will be pinned, the comments themselves uh, won't be uh, loaded because they are not pinned. So we need that kind of feature on the pinner so that we could say, hey, pin this CID for me, and the pinner would, um, would pin the, that CID. Um, so yeah, this is, com this is becoming like a blocker for us. So I would like to um, have, have that pr prioritized. And, and by prioritized, I mean we could 
we could uh, uh, like one of uh, one of Moxie uh, collaborators could, could tackle it, tackle it, but we could we should and we must converge into a solution. Uh, there's a couple of suggestions on how to do that. Um, so perhaps we could like I don't know schedule something so that we could converge on a solution and have someone um, tackle that or implement uh, that feature. Um, okay, quick quick comment on well, am I going to stop sharing? Uh, quick comment on 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 that. Uh, yeah, we, we there there's been some discussion around around which strategy to use for pinning uh, PFS. Uh, so static content on um, on peer base, whether we should use the, the pinner cluster and use the pinning API or whether we should just make it simpler on the user and just, just uh, do a recursive semi-automatic or automatic recursive pinning on, on the CRDT uh, somehow automatically. Um, so there's there's some discussion pending. Uh, good, good point on so bringing that up again. Uh, we should... Uh, Let's put that that on on the table again and, and discuss that this week. Um, that we're we're here. Like let's, let's put put aside half an hour and and, and just discuss all the first iteration of, of that. Um, any comments on that? Um, is this separate from the existing pinner, or is this like it seems like it's it's application application specific, and because. The current pinner sort of assumes that things are encrypted, but then this is sort of like making things unencrypted so the pinner can yeah it, it's PFS. So it has to be app level because the the pinner doesn't know the 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 content of of the CRDT, not able to to decrypt if it's a private collaboration. It's uh, so it's it's app oriented, but uh, even the app could be peer based could be some of some help on on there. Right, so as it just try to, if it finds a pinner, it does try to pin the, the CRDT. It could also somehow uh, help pinning the, inter like if there's a reference to an IPFS to CID, it could try and pin and pin that or even get that locally and then uh, and replicate yeah. that locally. So that there's, there's, there are some finer points there that we should. Uh, also, yeah. we don't want to, well, well we, want, we don't want to. Uh, recreate IPFS infrastructure on our side. We want to use as much as possible the existing IPFS infrastructure for pinning. Uh, so I guess there is a, a developer experience uh, angle to that, and, and and also an infrastructure angle to to that that we that we should discuss. Yeah, we should we should definitely discuss this. I think uh, from the from the consumers of peer base, the developers that use the the peer base. Um, module it's kind of it's kind of weird to not have this feature mm -hmm. um, but I agree that um, the solution that um, we, we will use um, we, we could like take a few uh, uh, paths different paths and we must discuss uh, discuss the advantages and, and shortcomings of each of each of one and, and just choose one for now and implement that I agree. Let's let's put some some time to for for this week to discuss that. Um, and also also I think there is an issue. If there's no no issue, Andrea, I would ask you to to open one. There's an issue there. There is right. So yeah, could, could you, if yeah, you could just add add the URL for the issue to the notes. Yeah, I've added to the questions, and I think Oli is also making some notes there based okay. on what you are oh, saying. Okay, cool. Thank you. I have, a, I have a question about the, the pinner thing also. Um, yeah, sure. sure uh, just, just from some Googling around, I saw that there's uh, a project on GitHub of trying to create like a sort of standard interface for create it, for doing uh, like IPFS pinning, um, which you may want to take a look at. Right? I think perhaps the way to do this is we have our you know, a uh, peer-based pinner, which then is allowed to call out to an IPFS pinner. Um, and that way we don't have to replicate anyone else's work, but we also have an interface that we can, you know, switch around. And then we can have different, you know, they can be memory-based, they can be persistent, we can, whatever we feel like. Mm -hmm. um, that way we're at least not duplicating work. I agree. That was also, I guess, uh... Uh, there was there was someone else that proposed that, and I think it's a good approach where 
uh, where it's just just a proxy for well the peer based spinner is a proxy and that in that part of of the of the persistence is just a proxy to to an actual pinner which could be the the public IPFS cluster um, yeah I think that's that's a good a good uh, way to do it but uh, let's Let's discuss this. Uh, I, I, could, I could put something on, on the calendar for us to discuss this, this during this week if you're uh, interested also. And then. Um, about this topic, any more ideas? No. All right, let's move on. Um, so next one is should measure the benefit and how hard it would be to use any kind of CRDT op based state based delta CRDT, run based CRDT, the benefits and how hard it would be to use. Um, this was my question as well. In terms of the peer base, okay, so in terms oh. of peer base right now, we just support uh, delta based CRDTs. Hmm. And um, if we really see the value of using operational based CRDT for some kind of situations or even uh, run based. CRDTs, I don't know if that makes sense, but let's say that a new kind of CRDT comes over in the future. Uh, should we be locked down to Delta CRDTs or should we make like a first save or something or adapter so that we could integrate several types of CRDT into our peer base and a module? Um, that's a good question. Um, my intuition is that is that we yeah we shouldn't just just uh, uh, constrain ourselves to delta based uh, CRDT because it may not fit so so uh, I guess the basic primitive would be a causal tree uh, causal a causal tree would be the basic primitive for op based causal CRDTs um, and that would fit and and easily you could um, uh, adapt any uh, use uh, any existing library for op based CRDT that is more or less pure. I, I'm thinking about the uh, the JSON CRDT one. Uh, what's it? Auto merge. Auto merge. Exactly. We can map auto merge easily on top of such a structure uh, and other op based causal uh, CRDTs uh, on top of that. So I think that's why I want to start trying IPFS Lock and Versidec and see how well it fits uh, with uh, with uh, peer base. Because that could be a good foundation for for for, for that. Um, I, right right now, there's there's no reason. I, I mean, the user is does. Right now, the the peer based user does not perceive that it's a delta based CRDT or it's an op based CRDT. It's really transparent, so there's no really no nothing locking us into delta based uh, CRDTs. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, the API. Sorry, but, but if they implement their own, if they implement their own CRDT, it must be a Delta CRDT. Yes, because yes, because we're um, right now we're extending the one when they they extend it, they ex, they are extending the, the Delta CRDTs um, singleton library um, library singleton. Uh, yeah, you're you're right, but that's easily. Uh, that could be easily configurable, I, I believe. We're still in time to 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 help on on on, on that, I believe. Yeah, uh, the, like I'm, I'm asking this just just because if we want to like adapt uh, or adopt or even use other uh, C uh, CRDTs that you mentioned, auto merge and, and so on, I would see like um, several modules, several adapter modules, like say peer base. Um, auto merge or something like that that will be like the adapter between the auto merge and our co our replication strategy and an and adapter uh, for the peer base and we'll, we'll have like a little ecosystem of um, adapters for all these kinds of um, CRDTs or type of CRDTs. Victor? We may see it in a way that there is a direct acyclic graph of change sets, right? And these are like uh, static data pieces which are replicated over the network. And that is like the lower interface. Mm -hmm. And the upper interface is some sort of uh, user consumable data structures, objects, JSON, something. And uh, everything in between, well, 
is some sort of CRT in our case. So mm -hmm. uh, at least there are like two very clear interfaces. Exactly. Uh, Adin, you wanted to... Yeah, I think the different types, I don't know, I, I've been noticing because I was thinking about sort of the deltas and the office and the state-based CRDTs and how we can sort of make use of all of them if we need to. I think they start to affect the replication strategy um, as well. And I was trying to think how to use sort of the, the libp to p style, like we'll have, a, you know, we have a, a route, we have sort of the message routing, and we have like the mesh of peers, and how we can use those sorts of structures to break things into pieces. But I think that it's possible that some of our, some of the things will end up getting a little coupled, um, where the CRDT um, and the replication that gets chosen to use with it uh, might be a little more coupled than we'd want, right? Like I think the the textile folks have basically been using message queuing and a pretty strict linear, you know, op like you know op based CRDT to do their to do what they're doing, and that's that only works because they sort of have these always online message queuing servers. Um, again, I may have misunderstood, but that was what I understood from our phone call, you know, whatever month ago. So uh, I don't know if it's going to be quite as simple as like create this, you know, create a causal tree, put things on top of it. I think we can have user, I think we can have something that's nice looking to the users. So they don't have to care about the underneath. But the developers are not gonna. It's gonna be harder. Uh, you're absolutely right. the The replication strategy there it has to be different because because the there's a lot of underlying assumptions that we, that 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 Delta CRDTs implement uh, that top based CRDTs just just uh, just don't need. Uh, well, they have the different uh, different representations, so and they have different replication strategy. Um, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I guess that replication strategy has to match somehow, somehow match the, the, the CRDT type, I would say, uh, because if it's a causal Merkle DAG, uh, you could do, use IPLD, uh, IPFS, uh, IPLD graph swap or graph sync or whatever to replicate the, 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 the offset, uh, well, the, the battery. But there could be other strategies for faster. If you want, like, real-time, perhaps this is real-time and a lot of fine-grained operations, like if you're doing a text editor, perhaps this is not the best strategy. And so you could plug different strategies that uh, we could define or, or, or plug in different strategies for, for replication, uh, which is something that I believe could be, could, could be a solution to, to, to this and they could live. We'll, we'll have to invent, invent some type of of, of grammar uh, that will will allow for both of these to coexist. But or uh, grammar, or some 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 language that will allow for this to 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 coexist. Um, you could, uh, in theory, use use delta state based replication and and then uh, Merkle DAG replication on top because we're already doing doing that for for instance the. Uh, discussify we have like a delta CRDT and then we have uh, if you want to we have history uh, like a causal history replicated as a, like a side chain and um, so there's nothing preventing us from doing that. yeah I just mentioned there and I think it's worth discussing this or resuming this discussion when we um, make and I think it's a Dean that is doing that the document that um, breaks down pure ways on, on interfaces and, and so on. Perhaps this is a point on, on the collaboration parts or, or section to discuss, uh, to have a further discussion, uh, brainstorm session, if it's worth or not. And if it does, then how can we approach this problem? Yeah, in terms of the, the, the developer experience, the, the, the API, um, I think it should be really intuitive for, for a beginner so that people just, just they don't, if they don't know CRDTs, they don't care about whether it's top based or delta based. Just want to create a JSON-like structure or an array or a set or or something. They should be really straightforward, and they shouldn't have to think about that. 
but there are ways of composing these these things that then they have to start thinking about the semantics of the different types uh, and so they have to dig a bit deeper um, because really when people are are used to dealing with databases they're not used to dealing with conflicts and merge conflicts they just implement typically implement last writer wins and they don't care about concurrency at all um, and so they have to start we force them to start having to think about this um, because of the offline all the offline scenarios that that can occur or see my offline like connectivity different connectivity scenarios uh jim you have something to say yeah yeah I, i've been thinking about this too because i was playing around with uh, i've worked on the auto merge project with that previously and then uh, you know obviously the the this delta crdt stuff and then playing around with sworn js and they they all three of those have like radically different sort of programming interfaces you know swarm js is uh, exposing like a graphql type interface which is really nice for uh say react yes programmers mm -hmm. uh you know the, the the delta crdts is sort of nice because you can pick and choose specifically which crdts and there's a whole menu of different crts DTs you can use and the auto merge is sort of nice because it's just seems like json so like a, a javascript programmer who knows json can sort of sort of grok it fairly easily so I, I don't see like there's a lot of benefit in having like a a, a unified programming interface over over all those. I don't know what the clear winner would be at this point. Uh, I think it's sort of I don't, but I, I I do see that like some of the work we've done with like connection management and the, how it bolts to like the P2P and managing swarms in the browser. Nobody else has done that in the world. I mean it's sort of like you know what we have is unique. So that seems like a valuable part to factor out. Um, some of, but some of that should probably move into lib p to p, like Adin says, and we, we we still have to like iterate a lot on these interfaces and figure out what's the right thing. Uh, You're absolutely right. Yeah, um, I, I don't I don't th I don't believe that they're unified. Well, it's it's my just my view, but I don't believe that the unified interface is is something to strive for. I I don't I don't really care. I just care about ease of of use for first first uh, comer. Um, and and yeah, you're right. There's in, in terms of the lib P2P, uh, this this all being something that perhaps lib P2P should be solving. Uh, there's a gossip sub. Uh, well, in, the, in that in that chapter, there is gossip sub implementation uh, that happened on Go and should will probably happen on JS. Uh, someone should jump in and at least and 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 do that on on the JS side because it would solve some of the issues that that we deal have to deal with in in. In peer base, in terms of, of the swarm of the peers and the gossip uh, topology, uh, and 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 that yeah that that could be factored out into something else. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, like I think like uh, because we're IPFS and we have sort of a unique advantage in that we can drop things into the IPFS daemon that will be on thousands and thousands of things. And the problem with running things in the browser is browsers can't truly talk peer to peer; they have to go through gateways. Mm -hmm. So we can, we're pr probably the only people in the world that has this ability to do like a massive sort of public infrastructure that people can use in browsers for this stuff. So Exactly. Um, also, there, there is some finer details on, on there. There's some different types of strategies and different replication strategies have different characteristics, like performance characteristics, have different, oh, well, uh, some different guarantees. Um, replication, uh, sorry, uh, persistence guarantees, uh, and and so at at certain point you have to know some of this stuff to decide. Um, so that, that there's 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 some API design work that has to happen. I I believe for for this to be as simple as possible for users and now also be powerful enough for for advanced users that know what what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any more thoughts on on this subject? Uh, I think we're uh, uh, some minutes uh, ahead uh, uh, above time. Uh, I would say, where are we? Um, I think there is one last question. There's a graph. There's a graph sync. 
discussion tomorrow. Are there any use cases uh, really want supported? Who who put that in? So you can explain. Uh, I did. Oh, you did. Yeah. Could you? Explain yeah. A bit? Yeah. So, of of all of the types of synchronizing of graphs and poor names for them, uh, there. <laughs> For at least a few of them, there's a meeting tomorrow to figure out, um, sort of get an implementation underway so that instead of IP, instead of just using uh, bit swap and asking for the hashes that you need, um, if you ask for an IPLD object, right, the root, you should be getting the leaves with it too. Um, and, and also the ability to have other sorts of, you know, queries with that. Uh, I'm sure the people who are who are running that meeting have all sorts of things in mind. Um, I'm going to be listening in just to see if there's anything that happens to resonate with the other type of graph synch synchronization that I'm working on. But I wanted to know if there were any use cases that we had in mind that were like, let's just make sure they support these as soon as possible. Um, when in terms of you know IPLD replication or or whatnot. If not, and then that's fine too. No, that's that's very interesting, uh, Jim. Um, this is sort of getting ahead of where I'm at, but uh, I was doing that experiment where I was trying to represent that in IPLD, and you know I wasn't worried about replication yet because you know bit swap, um, but obviously like that has its replication um, algorithm, which is just you know pulling out bits of binary tree and syncing it. So obviously but i would think that graph sync would just if the graph sync is doing its job at all it would cover like a simple binary tree syncing situation so uh it doesn't currently yeah. uh bit bit swap is is um is just is not is not recursive yeah. so but, but like with graph sync you should be able to say like give me this subset of a binary tree and uh and the full yeah. the full subset. I think the, our our use case or the simplest use case is get you get the root and then then get get the whole the whole tree because I believe getting a part of the tree is not really useful to a to a CRDT. I may be wrong, but I'm not seeing a use case for us to be to get a partial uh, replication or be at least be notified or of an intermediary yeah. state of the replication. Yeah, I, I guess I'm I, thinking. I may be wrong. The, I may be wrong. The that hypercore thing specifically. Which is actually based on some work Victor did, like way back when. So. <laughs> oh, um, all right. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, yeah, it's just it's just the it, it's it's model. It's just it's like it's it's really not much different than I think what we're talking about with IPFS log in that where it's like, um, you know, it's it's a tree and you want to just get sparse get a sparse set of records. You know, maybe a million records, and you only want you know record five hundred. You know, you, you don't want to sync the entire. Tree. Very, very naively, my 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 requirement would be sync an entire DAG of of operations, which could be potentially be be, be a huge tree of very granular, fine grain uh, operations, and sync that the the sync that across as as quick as possible. Some nodes I may have locally, um, some nodes I, I may not have. So there is like there. There may be some concurrent uh, root root hashes, and I want to get all of the concurrent root hashes, the entire op set operation set of those concurrent root hashes, and I might have part of that tree locally, um, and I want that on my side as quick as possible. Uh, yeah, that, that would be the the use case I would I would um, push for on on that meeting. And then, uh, so flooding a particular set of I you know I have a I have a hundred peers. I want to flood that particular set of peers with a request for some root, and I want to I want all of them to send me the data as soon as possible without like flooding the network more than they have to. Is that yeah, I, I don't I don't know about about the the, the how, what the strategy the flooding strategy uh, should be if there is some some different topology on 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 here, or or did or if the DHT is involved or or not, but that. I'm not sure about implementation details and, and what, what they're discussing. Um, but the requirement would, would be something like, yeah, get, get, it, get it over here as soon as possible without, without much, much uh, du duplication, without, uh, without much. So I don't want those 100 peers to all of them be sending at the same time to the same data. 
Um, uh, also, I would like to say that um, Discussify, or, or one of the goals of Discussify, was to have the data of the comments and the discussions open to the public. Okay, so at the moment they aren't they are they aren't really stored on IPFS in terms of having like a, a, a tree a graph. Uh, but uh, it was one of our goals in terms of like get this ID and you'll have like the full discussion uh, linked uh, through the through the tree of comments because threads are linked to the to the parents and so on. So um, if if you want, Adin, we could make um, we could schedule some time in order to make an exercise. If if I could if I could take graphsync uh, graphsync and make. Um, a proof of concept of having Discussify on top of um, this, this uh, graph sync module in order to have this um, data structure open to the public just by having a single CID and of course uh, replication, replicating and synchronizing over all the, the peers um, that are on the discussion. So I think, I I think that this also deserve, deserves uh, more, more discussion. I think we're, we're, we're ahead of time. Uh, but uh, one thing I, I I would like to add to that, and we can discuss this later, is is the having, um, if possible, having it streamable. So if I'm getting, if a new node is getting a, a set of operations, uh, I could the so the, the CRDT works the operator CRDT works by reducing the, all the, the operations into into the state, right? So if I get, if I could get the the, the operations in a, in a streaming way. Um, uh, I could, I could, I could upfront be be doing some work instead of just doing that on the same, uh, on the same uh, event loop on the same tick. Uh, so if I could do that in a, in a streaming way, that would be, um, that would be, I think, uh, extremely useful because I could get, I could be converging through throughout time, um, while the replication is happening of the. Of the operations are, are happening, and I, I'm thinking about also the UI. The UI could be updating with with, with new data uh, while the, the the replication is happening. So it shouldn't be blocking. Uh, it should be, should be streaming. I agree. Uh, but but we could we could just, just if you have like like uh, something that you want to propose, as in like a very quick document uh, you want to propose. Uh, and to convey to tomorrow for, for the meeting. We could also be on tomorrow's meeting if you could just, just point us to the issue where they're planning that. That would be also be useful. Yeah, I think um, they're, I think they're trying to just keep the meeting. It's, I, I think I'm sort of in the meeting semi by accident from when people thought the original graph synchronization stuff that I was working on was the same as this. There's a few different proposals that they, they've got everyone sort of looking at all the context ahead of time and they just want to do that. I, I think the things that we've asked for are all things people, other people have already asked for, which mm. is good. Okay. Um, I think I'm mostly going to be a, a fly on the wall in that meeting because there's a lot of people who spent like, there have been graph sync proposals going back for like two years or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I want to, okay. yeah, I think I'm just going to mostly let them, let them run the show. Uh, also, it's a matter of prioritization. If, if, there, there's like a, a very small subset of, of, of features that we may want that uh, for, from that. And if we could get, if the fly on the wall could, could just push for, 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 for those, or at least say that we, we, we need them uh, in, our, in order to, to do efficient replication, that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just drop, the, drop the link on, on, on the meeting link there. We can okay. try and fit in. Our schedule that would be cool. Um, so we're way ahead uh, out of time. We're past eleven minutes from from the, the hour. I'm going to end this here. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you Oli for uh, coming, uh, welcome and doing the notes. And thank you for everyone to, to for for their their contribution. And let's see each other next week. <coughs> Same time. Thank, thank you, Pedro. <laughs> bye bye. All right, thank bye, you. Bye bye. 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 See you guys. See you.